The Pale Blue Dot, which is a book by Carl Sagan, also presented as a lecture, is something that I have held very near and dear to me in my adult life and really made me reevaluate myself, not only as a human, but my place as a human within the universe. And this, if you don't know, is essentially Carl Sagan talking about what we have here on Earth, referencing a picture taken from Voyager 1 six, over 6 billion kilometers away, looking back at just a faint blue dot, the only world we have ever known, the only home we have ever had, and how there is a responsibility for us to treat it properly and to treat each other properly. And this was a very big inspiration for me whenever I decided to change my major to physics and wanted to pursue a PhD in astrophysics. Now, I did drop out, but that's just because I'm an underachiever and I happen to be pretty rotten at calculus. But regardless of all my academic shortcomings, I am still a big fan of physics, astrophysics, cosmology, and I consume a lot of that media, whether it be surface level stuff with like Neil deGrasse Tyson or something that is a little bit deeper. And that brings me to my next profound experience that made me reevaluate not just being human, but being alive in this big, vast space of the universe and what else is out there. And that is Remembrance of Earth's Past Trilogy, which contains a three-body problem, The Dark Forest, and Deaths. And there is another book. It's basically a fan fiction that got created into canon that's not by the original author. Uh, I don't really care about that book. I probably won't even read it unless if someone convinces me in the comments. But regardless, we're here to talk about the main three books of this trilogy. The Pale Blue Dot inspired me uh, in a positive way, where I was optimistic that I wanted to do better each and every day. Whereas Remembrance of Earth's Past... I think maybe fueled a little bit of my pessimism for humanity while also still being, being able to see the beauty of the miracle of life and the fact that we are here is almost an absurdity, at least to me. It reinforces all of these things while also making me reevaluate whether I would ever want to see aliens. And recently in the news, we have a bunch of unidentified objects flying through the sky and we're figuring out what they are. And I'll be honest, this trilogy reading it right before these events has made me uh, extremely on edge, to say the least. Because after reading this trilogy, I think I'm good on ever finding any aliens, at least ones that can visit us. I'm sure you're curious what these books are about. Uh, and I'll probably be referring to the trilogy as the Three Body Trilogy, because that's what most people call it, even though it's Remembrance of Earth's Past. So forgive me uh, when I say Three Body, I'm really talking about the entire trilogy. But this is very much about making contact with an alien civilization. And it is based in our past, our present, and our future. And it kind of kicks off in the 1960s cultural revolution in China. It kind of surprised me, <laughs> to be honest. I didn't expect that to be the starting point. I didn't expect it to be tied into this. And obviously it becomes a global affair. The aliens do eventually make contact, or we make contact with them. And that's when the fun or terror begins. I do believe that leaving this as ambiguous as possible is the best way to experience this trilogy because I found this to be one of the most captivating reading experiences that I've had in my life. I think that these books are extraordinarily bingeable. I think they're rereadable and it's something to be experienced. And I think the more blind you go into this, the better off you're going to be because these moments that you're going to be coming in contact with in books one, two, and three, some of them are jaw-dropping events, and I never, ever could guess what was coming next in this. Like, has to be one of the most surprising trilogies that I've ever read, or su surprising books, even. And make no mistakes about it, this is captivating because of the ideas that are being explored here. And there is a sense of horror here as well. It's very chilling, and the opening scene, in fact, is very chilling. And it's all backed by, it, it is a translated work, but it's backed by very terse and short writing that I would never call beautiful. I think there are some decent quotes from here, but the prose is nothing that I will ever fawn over. But I don't think that that's the point. And we'll maybe dial back to that a little bit later with some of the other stuff that I do think fall short in this trilogy, because obviously I've gushed to this point. But I do think there are things about it that will turn people off or that I didn't quite enjoy as much as others. Uh, if you are someone who sci-fi just hasn't clicked for you and, and you prefer really in-depth character work, this isn't going to change your mind. I would say this is absolutely not the sci-fi that is going to turn you around on the genre. This is, you know, quintessential science fiction. This is about the ideas and how they are explored and how it impacts civilization as an entire, uh, you know, as a whole. If you've never dipped your toes in sci-fi, 
I do think that this is a pretty great place to start. And this book, without having, you know, the most elegant style or prose, is able to speak to some really interesting and compelling and deep philosophical ideas and scientific concepts. I think that pessimism is explored very, very well here. And not just pessimism on the individual level, but as a whole, like we are very pessimistic as a species, at least over here in America, I feel that way. And I think he's tapping into something that is worth consideration that is very, very real. I myself opened up this review saying how I feel kind of pessimistic about humans, even though I can see a little bit of the beauty. Uh, and I think that this also works on a cosmic scale, whether it be the macro like that or in the micro. And thinking about uh, ourselves, like what if we are the ants in the universe? Like, does that actually nullify us? Because what if ants and the way we stomp on them and get rid of their anthills, what if they feel the way we do when we find out that there's something bigger out there? That is mind boggling to me. And I hope that I'm relaying it in a way that kind of gets across the point. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff that I found to be like the author taking my brain out of my skull and dribbling it down a basketball court. And I just felt discombobulated the entire time I read this trilogy. <laughs> And I have a quote here that I am going to read because I think it's really good. And I think it does have a good representation, especially of the first book of this trilogy. Is it possible that the relationship between humanity and evil is similar to the relationship between the ocean and an iceberg floating on its surface? Both the ocean and the iceberg are made of the same material. That the iceberg seems separate is only because it is in a different form. In reality, it is but a part of the vast ocean. It was impossible to expect a moral awakening from humankind itself just like it was impossible to expect humans to lift off the earth by pulling up on their own hair. To achieve moral awakening required a force outside the human race. And there are all types of moral questions that go into this story. And if there's something I could say about the Three Body Problem trilogy or Remembrance of Earth's Past, it's the fact that there are very big leaps in time. There are things that are glossed over as historical events that you almost have to read twice. You're like, wait, wait, hold on. What happened? That's insane. And it feels like he's actually created like, you know, universe building or world building where I would love other authors. And I know they're a fanfic novel, but I would like to get more stories set in a time period like the Great Ravine, which happens in this series. And without me telling you what it is, that's not a spoiler. But the Great Ravine, if you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. But it is a just... I need more. <laughs> I need more details about what was happening. You could write a 10 book series in the Great Ravine being the setting and go into the details and go into an everyday life of someone. And I think it would be a bestseller. I think it would be the best. I would love that so much because there are just concepts in this series that are touched on or time periods of humanity that are going through like ecological terror. And we don't get a lot of the nitty gritty details. So I did come out of this satisfied, but I did want more. But that's just not how this trilogy is constructed. And that kind of leads me into some of the things that I want to talk about that you're not going to find here. The first of that being the characters. Hold on a second. You said they were good characters. I have said in other videos that I actually think that the characters are a little bit misrepresented in this trilogy and that the characters are good. But I think I need to walk that back just a bit because these characters are not uh, multidimensional. They're not the most deep. Some do have interesting backstories, but a lot of the characters are very much a person in a time and place. And to be quite honest with you, are really there to mold an idea into a human form or a philosophical idea. People that almost exist just to represent a concept that are very black and white. And you can kind of overlook it as you're going through the trilogy because of the big, you know, jumps in time. But that, that isn't the best when it comes to characters. And there's a lot of great sci-fi out there that doesn't have the most in-depth character work. And this is going to end up being on that list. The reason why I do feel like the characters are a little bit better than what people give them credit for is because some of them really resonated with me. And even if they were a little bit one-dimensional or even unrealistic in some circumstances, uh, I felt that I could connect with them as if they were some resemblance of a human living during these times. And some of the backstories I thought were actually pretty cool and some of the connections that go in through the generations. But this is, without a doubt, not a story that's going to give you uh, just a wealth of character development. That's just simply not what this series is about. So I do have to recognize the fact that that's not a strong point of the series while also being able to acknowledge the fact that that wasn't the goal of Three Body. 
I think most of the relationships in these books are pretty cringeworthy for the most part. I, I, I didn't love any of that. There was one that was just okay. Uh, and I do think that there are some maternal themes uh, when it comes to the females in the books that I, I thought were also kind of like eh, a little eye rolly, a little bit cringe. But uh, there's a lot explored in all of this. And there is, you know, multiple different types of representation throughout this that I thought were decent. And it gave it the cast enough of a varied feeling that I never felt like it was just one stereotype throughout the entire trilogy. Uh, but the relationship stuff was a little meh. Another thing that may not click with you if you're not super into sci-fi, or maybe you're more into like a thriller sci-fi, is that while it is broad, and we kind of sweep over a lot of the information and time periods, there are times when we get down into the nitty gritty and we get into a lot of scientific details. Now, if you are someone that's reading Brian Greene um, or a Neil deGrasse Tyson book or wh whoever it might be, your favorite cosmologist or science entertainer, I think that you're most likely going to enjoy a lot of the details because there is some cool science here. However, if you're not really into that and you like more just broad sci-fi, I don't know if every single part of these books is going to be a home run with you. I happen to love the details and also love the fact that while there is some really good science uh, in this series, at least in my opinion, I also think that it's fun to explore edge theories, uh, the dark forest being book number two. And if you know what that theory is, that's obviously explored in great detail. So it takes a lot of really edge fringe theories or ones that just don't have a ton of supporting evidence and say, well, what if? And let me tell you something, if even one <laughs> of these theories happens to be true, I'm good. I don't know if I want to continue to live in this universe <laughs> uh, because it's terrifying and it does give you a good thought experiment. But a lot of this stuff is out there and a lot of it is saying, well, you know, theoretically, how about this happening? What would be humans response to that? And that makes for a very compelling sci-fi trilogy. I've seen a lot of people say by the time they finish Three Body Trilogy that they end up having an existential crisis. And I don't necessarily know if I had an existential crisis because I am very aware of how insignificant I am and how small I feel in the universe, but it did make me a little bit more cautious about the new frontiers uh, and putting together Space Force and all these things. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe it won't be so bad if I'm not around when or if we make first contact. And I will note that at the very, very end of this trilogy, I do think the end pays off the entire trilogy because that's what a lot of people say is, you know, well, why didn't you review each book at a time? I'll be honest. I read Three Body Problem. I thought about putting out a review for book one, but I said, there is so much potential here. I have to see if it pays off before I do my official review. And I'll just review the whole trilogy in a no spoiler fashion because a lot of what I felt about book one continued in book two and three. I found this trilogy to be very consistent. However... Even though the ending is satisfying, there is something at the very tail end of this that I didn't love. Like it was almost just a, felt a little rushed, maybe a bridge too far even. Um, and I don't want to use the words anticlimactic, but maybe a little anticlimactic. And I may have a spoiler discussion with a friend uh, here on the channel and talk about this trilogy, and then you'll be able to get to my spoiler-filled uh, you know, thoughts and details. Uh, so if you've read the series and you're curious what it is, I can get to it then. Um, but then it's something to keep in mind. I've seen uh, mixed reactions about the ending. I don't think anyone's saying that it's horrendous or that it's awful. Oh, I'm sure there are people because millions of people have read this by now. Uh, but I don't think it's a general consensus that the ending is disappointing. I think it pays off really well, especially the stuff leading up to it. It's just like a little section on the last page of this trilogy that bothered me a little bit. And now you have to read it and come back to this video and comment if you felt that way um, about the last page or so. This trilogy is excellent, in my opinion. And this is one that I am probably going to have to don my new favorite sci-fi of all time. And I'm not as well read in sci-fi as I am and, uh, in fantasy, but I'm going to continue to explore other things like the Commonwealth Trilogy by Peter F. Hamilton. And Revelation Space is definitely on that list. But for right now, out of everything that I've read, I do feel like Three Body or Remembrance of Earth's Past has really taken the mantle of what I want out of sci-fi. And I am a little bit terrified that maybe I will never find a trilogy that dives into just this this much and so many different ideas. And I have to stress to you that I'm talking about alien contact. I'm talking about a little bit about human morality and how it's affected, but it goes so much further than that and dives in so much 
to into so much just craziness <laughs> that it's it's hard to express to you how much gets thrown at you. I do think that at times it almost felt overwhelming because of everything I had to consider and kind of keep in, keep in scope of my mind when I was evaluating everything that was happening in this trilogy. But I love this. I thought it was great. And even with some of the flaws and not having the best character development and having pretty meh romance and, and among other things, I think what it set out to do was to make you think and to open up your mind and think about yourself in this big, vast space and universe. And is it collapsing? Is it expanding? I, mean, I don't know. But what I do know is that it was a wild ride that I happen to love. If you like this video, you can hit like. If you dislike, and you hit dislike. If you love to think about subscribing, I'll be doing more sci-fi content here on the channel, but I'm always reviewing books and having bookish long-form conversations, yada, yada, yada. I'd love to have you is the point. There is a Patreon in the description. It's optional, but always appreciated. And until I see you next time, be good, be safe, and remember to always keep turning the page. Big shout out to all my patrons, especially my King's Guard, which include Lauren, Henrik, Kai, Eric B., Oscar, Stewart, Stephen R., Ikaika, Amanda, RJ, Shaw, Nicoletta, Tanner, Jennifer, Garrix, Frank C., EV, Fever, J., Sarah, Pat, Prithvi, Kevin, Ryan, Michael, Terrence, Wade, Darren, Taylor D., Derry, John C., Bass, Mitch, Sebastian, Benjamin, Jobot, Noel, Amanda L., Kyle C., Scott, Steve Talks Books, Caitlin S., Dylan M., Yolanda, Carlos, and Nicholas. Thank you all so much. You're the best. <laughs>